It's Ron Brown with Tech for Seniors. Virtual Reality for Seniors, Part 3. The Experience. Now you know the routine. If you like this video, please click the like. And we'd sure appreciate it if you would subscribe to the channel. It really helps people who want to see these videos in the future. Thanks so much. Let's get on with the show. Now follow me as we go th for a ride on my bike through the town of Comox, British Columbia. Let's start at my house and we're going to go for a little tour. Now you're going to have a lot of fun with virtual reality. Oh wow, there's the wow factor. For only $299, you are going to have so much fun. As seniors, we often have bad news, either with personal health with ourselves or with other people. So we need to laugh, we need to get out, we need to have some fun. And virtual reality certainly will give you the fun that you're going to have. Now whether you want to take dance lessons, whether you want to go for a walk in Paris, or whether you want to visit a museum, or cycle through Holland, it's all possible in virtual reality. Now you're going to be able to communicate with friends. One of the great things about virtual reality is the ability to communicate from one person to the other in different locations. In, in virtual reality where you actually think you're talking to someone and they're right there in the same room. It is so cool. Uh, you can enjoy lots of games. You can play table tennis. Maybe you want to play table tennis with another group. You have a group every every Thursday that you play table tennis through. Again, all happens in virtual reality. So you're going to enjoy the games, you're going to socialize, and the other thing you're going to do is we're going to get you moving. As seniors, we have to keep moving. Remember the old adage, if you don't use it, you lose it. So we're going to shake it up and we're going to show you how to do some moves today. So let's continue on with our little cycle through the town of Comox, British Columbia. Well, now you have your new Oculus. We need to do a setup. You've got it out of the box. Well, you're going to need to set it up. It's pretty darn easy. And it's, you can use uh, your cell phone or a PC. In fact, as I said before, it is a standalone computer, so you don't need a PC to use it. So I did it with my cell phone. It's real easy to do. Let me go out, let me show you how that's done. Now also, in the setup process, you'll be able to communicate with other people. So if you have other friends that have Oculus devices, then you can communicate through that. So we'll set that up now. Let me show you how it's done. Now the first thing you're going to need to do is to go to your Facebook account. Ooh, you don't have a Facebook account. Remember, Facebook owns Oculus. Now, if you use Microsoft products, you have a Microsoft account. If you use Google products, if you have an Android phone, you use a Google, um, you have a Google account. And if you have any Apple devices, you have an Apple account. So it only makes sense that if you have an Oculus device, you're going to have a Facebook account. Because with the Facebook account, you're going to need to register the device. You're going to get um, all the software updates for your Oculus device. You'll be able to purchase apps within the Oculus Store. And when you connect for multiplayer, again, this all happens through the Oculus software and the connections through the uh, Oculus uh, website. And again, this is why you need a Facebook account. Now, you don't have to put any information in your profile uh, online or anything like that. Just check your privacy settings and make sure you're secure if you're not a regular Facebook user and you'll be just fine. All right, where to start? Well, you'll have pre-installed on your Oculus Quest some basic applications 
that you can use to have fun with, but you can also go to the Oculus Store and download many more applications, games, whatever you want onto your Oculus Quest. You can do this from your phone, you can do it from your PC, or you can do it actually right within the Oculus Quest device. So there are many ways in which you can get more programs, apps onto your device to have lots of fun. Now, uh, the next thing you have to decide is really what do you want to do with the Oculus Quest, right? You have it and you're wondering, oh, wow, this is cool. Well, it can actually be used as a desktop browser. Yes, there's a browser. You can actually browse the internet. You can check your email. And it even links to YouTube, which opens up a huge possibility. Yes, all your YouTube videos can be seen in virtual reality. In fact, you can even watch Huey and I and Bob and the whole gang of Tech for Senior in virtual reality. That's a cool thought, eh? Now, uh, you can also link your television in and you can watch TV in virtual reality. Or you can use it to communicate with other people. So you and I could be having this conversation now in virtual reality as well. Or, uh, which I decided to do, is to use it for exercise. Remember, if you don't use it, you lose it. So uh, the focus today uh, on this video is going to be how I used it in exercise. Now we're going to show you, this is a bike. Uh, this is actually my daughter's bike. I borrowed it from her. And this is sitting in our exercise room, and you'll see it sits in front of a television. Uh, my goal was to uh, have this mounted and to uh, use it with my virtual reality headset on and to do some cycling. You'll see that it's an outdoor bike, but of course it's mounted on a, a, a stand. Uh, I should tell you that, the, that when you put a bike on a stand, it actually gets quite tall. So I need a little uh, footstool there to uh, help me get on and off. And the goal was that I was going to sit on this bike, put my virtual headset on, and cycle around the world and have some really cool fun with it. Now, this is the stand. The stand, uh, the only equipment that I really needed was the stand to mount the back tire on. And this uh, cost around $100, and it just clips on to the uh, rear axle and is really not, uh, not a problem to install at all. Very simple. Now, one thing that I want you to uh, purchase if you are planning to do this is this little device made by Magene, M-A-G-E-N-E. -E. And this is a little device, then you'll see it clips on the pedal there. And this is a Bluetooth connection that connects to the headset, the Oculus headset. And this allows the device to accurately decide how fast you're going. It converts your pedal rotations to speed. So the faster that you pedal, the the faster you're going to go virtually, right? Uh, but without this, you can't do that. The pedal pedaling wouldn't really count. So this is a way in which your pedaling links in to virtual reality. Uh, these are very common. You can uh, this is 20 bucks for one of these devices, and it just clips on the pedal. Now I didn't find uh, after a while using the bike. Uh, I found a little uncomfortable as you get older. Sitting on a bicycle seat isn't uh, isn't great. And the other thing that happens is that, particularly for my wife who has some arthritis, she couldn't get on the bike. So the other thing that you can do is get a recumbent bike. This is the one I bought. This is about $300 and it's a recumbent bike and it works great. It's comfortable. You can sit there and you can do all the cycling with a recumbent bike. Now learning the equipment. Now learning the equipment is fun and it's easy. It's a whole new world that you're going to be entering and it's foreign to you. You've never done this before. It is totally immersive. You are going to be completely in a different world and oblivious to the outside world. You'll also need to move and activate menus. Uh, you'll be setting a floor level and also you set peripheral boundaries around where you can move so to keep you safe because safety is a big concern. Now I want to talk a little bit about a common problem in virtual reality particularly for beginners and that is nausea. So I'm going to give you some advice. 
The first thing is take it slow. Start with a seated or sedentary experience and try not to do too much in the way of motion to begin with. It takes your brain a little bit of time to get used to the new experience that you're going to have. The second thing is don't push through virtual reality sickness. Stop what you're doing, reassess the, assess the situation, go away, maybe try a different application. Now, if you are having problems and you're in a game and you're sort of moving along in a sliding sensation, the best thing I find is if you actually start to move your arms and legs. Uh, this, this triggers your brain and says, oh, we're actually, this is a correct thing to be doing. We're actually moving. And that sometimes helps. The other thing is the um, bracelets that you can wear around your wrist. The have that little ball that pushes in on the uh, front part of your wrist. This, this is a P6 acupoint pressure. And we often use these for people in airplanes or, um, or in, in ships for, for air sickness or ocean sickness. And these, um, these, these work quite well as well in virtual reality. Also, a spearmint is, is helpful. So chewing some Wrigley spearmint gum or sometimes some mint candies can be helpful. And the other thing, which is an interesting one, is a fan. Get a fan and point it towards you from the front of the room and have the air blowing towards you. This does two things. First of all, it does help with the nausea, but it also, sends, you get a sense of direction and always sort of can point yourself back in the right direction. It's quite, it's quite helpful, actually. Now, I wanted to tell you about a website and a software program that I strongly recommend, and it's called VZ Fit. There's two options for this. One is free, and you can sign up for free, and there's a paid version. This is a cycling app, a fitness app, that really works well for you. Uh, the free version, you get one ride or one route per month, Whereas if you have the paid version, which is $10 a month, then you get unlimited. You can cycle all over the world. They have groups you can go cycling with. You can uh, get coaches. There's all sorts of things that you can do uh, with this application. And it's an application or a game that you would download onto your Oculus Quest. Now, why is this so important? Well, first of all, you can set it so you're a novice or a beginner. And the first thing when you're trying to ride a bicycle like I have with my stationary bike, is, um, of course, the bike doesn't move, but you are going to be moving in the, um, in, the, uh, in the game. So what they do is they work it so that it, usually the routes they choose are straight routes so you don't have to turn. And also they've developed it so that if you tilt your head to the left, then you can turn and bank to the left. If you tilt your head to the right, you turn and bank to the right. Also, it uses uh, Google Maps, the road view, for their travels through the different, um, different areas. So if you come across a car, the car sort of just flattens out and you go right over top of it. It's a bit weird, but you'll get used to it and you don't have to turn. And so it makes it much easier, particularly when you're getting used to this. So if you're trying, planning on using uh, to use your... Um, uh, Oculus Quest for a uh, fitness and, and riding a bike like I tried, then for sure you really want to use this this app. It's called VZ Fit, and I've put the link uh, in the uh, uh, just below uh, on the screen. So give this a try. So just remember when we're seniors exercising, the most important is your safety. You are going to be totally immersed in a different world, so we want to make sure you don't hurt yourself. So learn the equipment and start slowly. The other thing I'd like you to do is set some realistic goals. The most important thing is to have fun. And remember, if you've had some health issues, maybe you've had a small stroke or something, you have maybe some eye-hand coordination problems, then there's all sorts of applications in virtual reality that can help you improve your eye-hand coordination. Virtual Reality for Seniors, Part 3, The Experience. Ron Brown with Tech for Seniors. Hope you've enjoyed the show today. Bye now.